Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. It's the day that I think many of you, and I know we, have been waiting for since the release of AMD's R9 290X and R9 290 graphics card. It is the first retail custom designed card. Uh, this is the ASUS R9 290X Direct CU2 uh, overclocked edition card. This is a uh, custom built, custom PCB, custom cooled R9 290X graphics card. And that's interesting and particularly important for AMD as they've had a lot of issues with uh, uh, clock speed variants and performance variants on their reference designed cards. And uh, this is maybe the first to kind of fix those issues. So if we go ahead and take a look at our card here, you'll see that um, it's, it's quite a bit larger than your reference 290. Um, you can tell just by looking at this side that it's taller, the reference 290X stopped right here. So you've got some definite uh, additional height you have to deal with. And it's maybe, I don't know, a quarter of an inch to a half an inch longer on the back, thanks to this sheath. Uh, but what you're looking at here is a two fans. This is uh, the ASUS Cool Fan, Cool Tech Fan technology, which they claim allows it to improve airflow while keeping noise low. And in our testing, that was definitely the case. Up top, you have one uh, mammoth, enormous 10 millimeter heat pipe. And then on the bottom, you have four more heat pipes, all of which uh, draw heat from the GPU out to the various fins of the heat sink, which you can kind of see poking through right there. On the back of the card, besides my fingerprints, you'll also see uh, you got some branding here. I like the inclusion of a back plate here. It adds some strength to the card and it also kind of acts as a little heat sink for uh, some of the power delivery mechanisms. The output configuration, display configuration is kind of what we've seen with the 290 and 290X cards thus far. Two DVI, uh, dual link DVI ports, full size HDMI, full size display port. Um, out, as far as power connections go, so we can show you this here, uh, you've got an eight pin and a six pin still. So even though this is an overclocked custom design, it's still an eight pin and a six pin, although they are rotated 90 degrees. So you're actually plugging them in backwards, which uh, is actually helpful. So you don't have to worry about getting your fingers in behind this sheath to uh, remove them if you, uh, if you have to do that actually. So, uh, Overall, this card is actually pretty impressive. Its default clock speeds are 1,050 megahertz. And there's nothing listed as an up to, there's nothing listed as, um, you know, maybe 1,050 megahertz. And keep in mind that the reference R9290X listed an up to 1,000 megahertz. So this is only a 50 megahertz overclock if you look at it in that fashion. However, what's great about this design and what we were excited about for these custom built R9290X cards is the improved cooler. So with this cooler, the DirectCU2 cooler from ASUS, we were able to run uh, the GPU. It has still has a switch that has two modes. It has a performance mode and it has a quiet mode. In performance mode, uh, which is the default setting, which is where we ran most of our benchmarking and testing, it was able to keep the GPU at like 77 degrees Celsius. It was able to maintain 1050 megahertz clock speeds throughout an entire 25 minute run of uh, Metro Last Light. And it did so while being six dBA quieter than our reference cooler. So it was quieter, it was cooler, and it uh, had better performance. And if you compare that to say the results we saw with our Sapphire, kind of the initial reference uh, cooler, reference, reference cooler R9290X that we actually purchased, um, even though it claims there should only be a 50 megahertz difference between this card and that original reference design, uh, if you look at the average, uh, average, I'm sorry, clock speed over the, uh, between this and that Sapphire card, you're talking about 178 megahertz delta. And that's partly because of the, of, of the clock speed variance issues that we have seen on the R9290X cards. This definitely addresses all of that. They have some other interesting things. You'll notice here that we have, uh, there's some red stickers on it. it actually ships and some of the pictures in our full review uh, will show without these decals actually applied that I kind of actually like the kind of all black look. But they also have uh, some yellow ones here too. And I show you, there are some pictures in the full article. You know, the basically if you have a, a, a motherboard from Asus that has the red coloration versus the gold coloration, you can, you can match it accordingly. 
The downside to this is its availability. It's only going to be expected to be $20 higher. It's supposed to be 400 or I'm sorry, $569 MSRP, which is $20 more than what the ex the expected MSRP for the R9 290X is today. However, availability concerns are twofold. One, as we record this video, it's almost impossible to find R9 290Xs, uh, and if you do find them, they're not at their MSRP price. They're $50, $100, $200 more expensive, thanks to some shortages, either because of extreme demand, lack of production, or Bitcoin mining, depending on, on who you talk to. Uh, the other complaint is that ASUS told us that this card wasn't even going to be available in the market until mid-January 2014. So as we record this, it's about 30 days out from that. So even if you're really excited about this, you're kind of limited on, uh, on, on when you can expect to get it and when it's released. Will it be in short supply? Will it be hard to find? Will retailers kind of jack up the prices on that? Uh, we're expecting some more retail custom design cards in the office very soon so we'll be putting those through the paces uh, if you want to see the full review we did overclocking we compare quiet mode to performance mode we do a lot of other testing and of course our normal benchmark suite as well uh, make sure you check out the full review it's at pcper.com and this is the asus r9 290x direct cu2 thanks